G'day mates. Bit of a spur of the moment video this one. I was putting together a video on sleep apnea and weight loss and I've been monitoring a friend of mine, Todd. He's a Sleep HQ Pro member, lives over in the US and he's been losing a lot of weight on Wigovi. A lot of weight. He's just stopped recently. Anyway, I jumped on Sleep HQ to check out his charts just to see how he's tracking. And as I did so, I realized he's just gone to sleep. So I thought we'll check out how Todd's sleeping in real time. He's having some mouth breathing issues. So I wanna show you how that looks. And I'm actually gonna demonstrate using my own mask. And we're gonna try and match up the charts. All right, as you can tell, I haven't planned this video very well, but we're just gonna roll with it today and just go with the flow. And then we're gonna take a look at some Eli Lilly clinical trial results on weight loss and sleep apnea because they're pretty shocking, to say the least. All right, let's start by having a look at Todd and his results. So he's over in the US now, it's Monday night, 10.30. I'm here in Australia. Kids are about to be picked up from school, 3.43 p.m. on Tuesday. All right, so we'll zoom down here, 10.30 p.m. right now. And this is his Sleep HQ data that's being streamed from his CPAP machine via the Sleep HQ Magic Uploader. It's connected up his device to his Wi-Fi, and it's just sending all the data, all the respiratory data, up to the Sleep HQ cloud, so we can check it out. All right, and we'll zoom in on his breathing here. All right, so this is his pressure from his CPAP machine. He's currently using his device as a CPAP machine in fixed pressure mode, set to one level, which is 10 centimeters. And down below that, we have the flow rate or his breathing. You can see him, I'll just zoom in a bit more. We can see him breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. Anything above the zero is inhalation, so he's breathing in here, and anything below the zero is exhalation when he's breathing out. All right, so his breathing's looking pretty good, and look at the, look at the leak rates, all right? Now we know it's mouth leak, likely mouth leak, because he's using a pillow-style mask, and these masks seal really well, especially at lowish pressures, tens of sort of mild to moderate pressure, because they seal right in the nostril. It's locked into place there. So it's very rare to get these big jumps in leak unless it's like full on come out of his nostril, uh, most likely mouth leak. All right, but you can see it here. So the leak rate's climbing up liters per minute here. All right, and then look, whoop, up it goes up here to 34.8 liters per minute. And if we pan across to the right here, look what happens, all right? See how all of a sudden the leak rate just drops off a cliff back down to zero. That's another dead giveaway that it's mouth leak. When you see these big drops all of a sudden from high to low with a pillow mask, most likely mouth leak. And if we scroll forward a bit more, once again, happens again. All right, up here at 38.4, falls off a cliff down to zero. So his mouth is opening, and then all of a sudden he's waking up out of sleep, it's disturbing his sleep because it's a bit uncomfortable. Closes his mouth, falls back asleep, Mouth opens again. Now it's not a big deal for Todd. It likely is disturbing his sleep a little bit, but his oxygen levels are good. He's got enough air coming into his lungs. Not a, not a big deal, but for some people it will be a big deal because it will cause a lot of this below. See this flow limitation trace here? This is air flow resistance right here, the upper airway. And when this pink line increases, there's more resistance, there's less air getting into your lungs. Now I wanna try and recreate this mouth leak right here, right now, and sort of show you what's going on, on my profile. All right. So I'll put on brand new Nova Micro here, guys. So I'm gonna breathe mouth closed, and then I'm gonna show you mouth open, all right? So right now I'm I block you off the air through my nose. That's how I could talk. There's no air coming through here. I blocked it off so I could talk. All right, so I close my mouth. And now I'll mouth breathe. This is what it's like, ready? Take on it.
All right, so here's the mouth leak simulation, just like we saw with Todd. Now, in the beginning, breathing is nice and regular, nice and even. My mouth is closed, but then we pan forward a little bit. Uh-oh, here we go. Here's the mouth leak in action. Look at it, up to 40 liters per minute, just like we saw with Todd a few moments ago. And then we also get a reduction in the breathing here. More air shooting at our mouth, less air into our lungs. And then look, I close my mouth, the leak rates fall off a cliff back to zero. Breathing improves, fall back to sleep, mouth drops open here again, leak rates shoot back up again, we get the reduction in the breathing. Textbook mouth leak right there. Now let's head back to Todd's profile because I have a feeling if we come up here, daily usage one hour and 39 minutes, let's refresh the page. Here we go. 2 hours and 23 minutes. All right, let's see what's happened. Well, would you look at that, hey? He has just closed his mouth right here. You can see it, hey? Look at that. Just like we saw, my mouse isn't working. Here we go. All right, so here's the leak rates. And then, whoop, down to zero. And look at the breathing. Much better, isn't it? I do wanna point out one more thing. Have a look at this flow limitation trace here. Now you can see, and I'll just zoom in on this last bit. Uh, you can see when the leak rates are high, look at the air flow limitation. It's quite high as well, isn't it? But when the leak rates are low, as they are here, no flow limitation. Why is that? Because CPAP is all about positive airway pressure, forcing air down into your lungs past that resistance, right? But if the air is shooting at your mouth, well, it's not doing its job. It's not forcing air down past that resistance, is it? The airway is not pressurized, not high pressure on the outside, low pressure in your lungs, air flowing down the gradient into your lungs. It's not flowing straight out your mouth. So that's the reason why we get that increase in airflow limitation, airflow resistance, when there's higher leak rates, whether it's mouth leak or mass leak. Anyway, we're getting off track. Today is about weight loss and sleep apnea, and I wanna show you how you can track your weight, your calories, your steps, your sleep stages, right here on Sleep HQ, alongside your CPAP therapy data. And here's my profile right now. I've got my daily steps here, my weight, and my active energy, my calorie burn from when I'm exercising. And this is all coming in via Apple Health. So you just download the Sleep HQ iOS app onto your iPhone, it also works on iPad, and then authorize Apple Health. And then whatever health tracker you're wearing, whether it be an Apple Watch, an Aura Ring, a Ring Con, a Willing Sleep Mat, whatever it is, as long as it's writing data to Apple Health, then it will sync up with your Sleep HQ account. If you've got some smart scales at home, you hop on the smart scales, they sync the weight to Apple Health, that weight comes into Sleep HQ, and you can track it just like you can track your CPAP data. Um, and this is my profile here, so you can see steps, get my weight here, and this is active energy, my calorie burn when I'm exercising. I've also got my sleep stage data here, so I know how I'm doing with REM sleep, deep sleep, how long I'm awake for, and I've also got my O2 ring data here. So this is a sleep HQ O2 ring that tracks your blood oxygen, pulse rate, and movement data. Once again, syncs it all up with your CPAP data. And we can see on this particular night, had a little period here. I think I must've had a few drinks by the look of this. That's more oxygen drops than I normally get. And this information also becomes part of your automatic weekly report. I'll show you that here. So this is the report we send out every week. It's an automatic report. You receive it via email and it compares your previous week of data with your current week. All right, so here's all the information. We'll come down here and I'll show you. Here's my oxygen information coming from the O2 ring. This heart information is also coming from the O2 ring, but I wanna come down here and show you my sleep data because I'm pretty proud of this. Check this out, 20% bump in REM sleep. Not bad if I do say so myself. And then we've got the general health data here as well. 
So you can see my weight reduced slightly. And if you're someone who's tracking your weight, let's just say you're like Todd and you're using Wagovi, this is fantastic. It's really motivating to be able to see your weight drop off, look at your CPAP statistics change and improve over time. It motivates you to burn more calories, do more steps. Fantastic. All right, now my average calorie burn, slightly up. Average steps, up 7%, pretty good. So that's the report right there. And we're currently working on a monthly report, a quarterly report, and a yearly report. And you'll be able to compare any month, any year, any week, anything you like, uh, keep you motivated. Now let's go back to Todd's account and I wanna show you his trends. Um, so we'll go to the range data. So this is Todd's weight here. Started out 348 pounds. Like I said, he's on Wagovi, GLP-1 receptor agonist. And now he's just come off it now and he's down at 221 pounds. My God, he's nearly halved in size. Unbelievable, and he looks great. Um, he really does. Now, if we look at his AHI over the past two years, you can see it hasn't really changed much. Like there's not a clear trend here, but if we come down and check out the amount of pressure required to keep that AHI nice and low, check it out, here it is here. Here's the pressure. So originally, his pressure's peaking at around 25 liters, liters, dickhead, centimeters of water, right? He's on a BiPAP machine here, V-Auto. And now, like I said before, 10 centimeters fixed pressure. It's a big drop in the pressure required to keep air flowing into his lungs. But have a look at this as well, this is interesting. So as he's losing weight here, have a look at the leak rates. The leak rates are actually trending upward. And I don't exactly know why. I have a feeling it has something to do with the mouth leak. And perhaps as Todd is losing a lot of fat, he might also be losing a bit of muscle as well. And perhaps that muscle was supporting his jaw, keeping his jaw up and his mouth closed. Look, I don't know, but perhaps that's something to do with it. And what you can see here is as the leak rates increase, have a look at this, the airflow limitation is also increasing. But I guess what I'm trying to show you here is that with weight loss comes dramatic changes in your CPAP data, your pressure needs, um, everything changes. And it's great to track it here on Sleep HQ. And I wanna show you his O2 data, his blood oxygen data, because Normally I'd be a little bit concerned about that airflow limitation. I'm not so much with Todd, like I kind of am, but I'm not because his oxygen levels are so good. All right, so we've got the sleep stage data here, the average heart rate, and this is interesting, watching his heart rate move up and trend down over time and then trend up again. This is to do with changes in his medication, which is interesting. But look at the SpO2, the blood oxygen, you can clearly see a lovely increase Look at this over time. Can you see that? How good is that? And then also his O2 score improving. And then the drops per hour, the desaturations also improving. All right, so this is why I'm not really worried about Todd because his oxygen level is so nice up here. Look at it. And it's just increasing as that weight comes down, which is exactly what you want to see. Now, for those of you watching who are dealing with all the negative shit associated with being obese, sleep apnea, diabetes, cardiovascular issues, depression, the list goes on and on and on. In the next five years, most of you will likely be taking what's known as a GLP-1 receptor agonist or some sort of version of those drugs, whether it's Wagovi, Munjaro or whatever else in the bloody pipeline. And the reason being is they work really well. And I wanna read you some clinical trial results from Eli Lilly's Surmount OSA. And here's the results. Reduction in sleep apnea severity, terzepatide, which is Munjaro, led to a significant reduction in the apnea hypopnea index, AHI, with up to a 62.8% decrease equating to about 30 fewer obstructive apnea events per hour of sleep. Disease resolution. A significant portion of participants achieved disease resolution, 
In study one, which was participants not on pap therapy, so they'd been diagnosed with sleep apnea, but they hadn't started CPAP therapy yet, 43% reached the criteria for disease resolution. While in study two, participants using CPAP therapy, so these were people who had been diagnosed with sleep apnea, they'd been using a CPAP machine, and then they told them to stop using the CPAP machine for the next 12 months, which is a bit rough if you ask me. 51.5% achieved this outcome disease resolution. Now it's worth noting that disease resolution was defined as an apnea hypopnea index of fewer than five events per hour or an apnea hypopnea index of between five and 14 events per hour. So that's the mild range with a low score on the Epworth sleepiness scale, ESS. And I think it was less than 10 from memory. And I think they threw that extra definition in at the end there, just to make the results look a little bit better, but regardless, incredible results. And check out the weight loss. Study one, participants not on PAP therapy, participants experienced an average weight loss of up to 18.1%. This is over the year. And study two, participants using PAP therapy, participants experienced an average weight loss of up to 20.1%, average across everyone. That's a significant reduction in weight. As I just showed you before, has a dramatic effect on your CPAP data, on your blood oxygen data, on your health, on everything. Some fantastic outcomes. And if you speak to Todd, I've done an interview with him before. If you wanna check that out, click the link above. He will tell you how it's changed his life for the better. And it's gonna be interesting to see what happens now that he stopped taking Wegovy. Will he put the weight back on? I don't think so. I think Todd's got this. Anyway, mates, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm watching Todd sleep today. It wasn't that exciting. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and if you're trying to lose weight, good luck. Cheers. G'day, mates. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.